Thanks to Guatemala team for excellent presentation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Tapan from India. And I am working in International Development Enterprises India. And as all of you know, International Development Enterprises India has been working in India for the last 20 years to promoting micro irrigation system among small and marginal farm families. And ID India also working bridging the gap of small farmer with the market. I am going to tell you, I am not going to present any of the photo or PowerPoint presentation. I am going to tell you a story, story of a farmer. In, in fact, in six months back, I have been to a very remote village in Koraput. Koraput is well known for highly tribal population in India. And I have been to that place and I met a farmer in that particular village. And the farmer name is Ghai Kilo. The, the, the farmer name is Ghai Kilo. He's a tribal farmer. So when I talked to him, I asked two years back what was the situation. So he said me that it was miserable. I said, why? What has happened to you? Now so much greenness and all, but you are telling there's a miserable condition. So he said, two years back, there was no agriculture in this particular village and people are mostly depending on forest and also whatever the agriculture, the little agriculture they were doing, they are only doing the rain fed agriculture, only four month crop, that is only for staple crops and both husband and wife, they used to work in the neighboring villages as agriculture laborers. The most pettiest part of the person, what I realize that they is to migrate to a neighboring states for at least six months and maximum eight months. So these migrant laborers, what they used to do, they are hired by local, local, uh, uh, local contractors, they are labor contractors, they are labor contractors. So they hired these people and they give some advance to the farmer. So this fellow is handing over that money and he has to go to stay in the place, distance place. Maybe 500 kilometers from the village or 700 kilometers from the village. And this farmer, this person, he, what he said that he used to go to engage in the construction work. Construction work is the building construction, industry construction and the person who is working there they are forced to work from morning 6 to evening 6 o'clock. You can't imagine and they are putting in a very bad condition and there is no adequate food. And the piteous part is this farmer cannot see to the family, he cannot talk to the farmer, cannot talk to the, his family members, cannot talk to his parents, such a piteous condition. So but there is no other way because whatever income they are getting from the forest, and what is the income they are getting from the four month rain fed crop is not sufficient. So there is no alternative for the guy. So what happened? So he has to manage like this. Two years back, it is, he said that in the January 2010, he was preparing to go to for migration work. But since a person is going for six months work, so he had been to a market to purchase something for his family members. So when he went to the market, the nearest market, that's a Kunduli market, in the, there's a good market. So when he went to the market, he found that there's a huge gathering, there's a good music. People are surrounding to the, surrounding to a demonstration area. So he went there and he just stood there. He saw that a man is operating a pump a total operated pump and lifting water from 10 feet of well. So he stood there and he thought, so this pump, if he's lifting water from here, why not I can use this pump in my land? And there's a small stream is flowing there. So what he did, but he little difficult for him because he is not in that kind of crop. So he went and talked to the officer. Officer is a promoter of Scampis project. What happened? He asked the Scampis project promoter 
that really this technology is very interesting for me. Can I use it? He said, why not? Because we are here and we are helping for the poor farmers in this area. So we are going to definitely help to you. So what happened? This for the promoter, he made some kind of confidence to the farmer to guy that you can take this pump and can use in your land and I will also help you to educate for a high value crop. So this fellow is very happy. He said he came to his house because he has to go to, he has already said to go to distance place. So he came to his house. He, ran. he came to house, talked to his wife, talked to his parents. Do you know? And he has bought a small colorful leaflet. And he showed that because he showed that, do you know, there is a technology available in the area and this person is very helpful. He is coming to educate me, but I will not go this time. I will take a chance. His parents say, yes, it's a better. So he, next day he went there. There is a dealer in the market. So he bought a pump. When he purchased the pump, the demonstrator, the promoter, he was asked by the dealer, just you go and talk to the farmer. So he came and he convinced the farmer how to install this pump. He educated the training, he educated the farmer, his family, how to install the pump and how to take the new crop, high value crop. Because this fellow was earlier not, not known this kind of crop, but only know the kind of paddy cultivation that is during four month time. So what happened? He first crop, he took this summer tomato because the summer time is a jan for India. Then he took the cabbage. And you don't believe that you, he took the third crop that is sweet potato. Sweet potato in the rainy season in Orissa, if one can start to cultivate, then in the month of November is a good demand. So all this planning by the promoter helped that farmer to earn money. And that first year itself, he earned 500 US dollar. So that person, again what has happened, that person again continue in the second year. He said that second year, because 2010 and 2011, he said 2011 again he had two more crop. That is eggplant and sweet potato, sweet potato and sunflower. Sunflower, he says sunflower and sunflower and eggplant. So with this, he also increased income because he took a five crop. Then what happened? Slowly, slowly he earned a lot of money. Then what happened? I asked, so you are not, you are not going to, going outside to for any migration work and you are only busy with your agriculture activity. So he said, it's a very nice thing because I always stay outside from my family. Now at least I can spend my time with the family and my wife is not going outside to work some other neighboring labor agriculture work. And both husband and wife, they are busy with their work. And they also, he said that for this money, initially what he said that actually I'm very happy that I spend money for my father's and mother's treatment. So health treatment, he spent money. Second, he said that he has purchased some ornaments for his wife. Then also I said, what else you have done? No, he said that I also make some investment, innovation of my house. But now, because there is a, some six month time, because I met that person in January, now I came to know he has purchased a second and two wheeler. So I asked my promoter, you asked why he purchased? So he said, to take the vegetables, there are so many vegetables, to carry this vegetable I need a transportation, took the vegetable to the market and selling in the market. So this is a little small intervention of the Scampis project brings happiness to Ghaing Kilo. And to, in this particular story, if you find there is a promoter from Scampis project who has helped to contribute a lot to bring the happiness. So here, I will introduce one of my promoter. He is here. He will tell the second story. May I request to Mr. Vijay Rao to come over here and tell his story, how he is helping the farmers. Thank you.
your question about how the farmer actually got his return on investment. <coughs> Good morning. I am Vijay Kumar Raut from India. I am a promoter working in this campus project and I am doing for farmers giving technical guidance uh, for uh, uh, installation of a uh, micro irrigation system and a preparation and installation of uh, natural organic fertilizers. So I have uh, got a lot of stories in my work. Now I am going to tell one. One village, Gumiguda, where uh, many <coughs> tribal families are living and uh, when I had gone to first time, I found uh, so many barren fields are there. I found uh, one, I selected one field there, uh, whose landowner was Mr. Isaac Raika, I called him and uh, asked with him about his land and uh, my uh, technical, uh, my um, project and uh, how uh, and uh, discussed why he not uh, utilized the barren land. He expressed his inability and uh, his miserable condition that he is uh, actually he has not a good idea about the cultivation and he has not uh, no idea about vegetable cultivation and he has no money um, to purchase any kinds of uh, petrol or diesel pumps and also there is not uh, available water sources uh, the, due to scarcity they, he they did not uh, utilize that land. So I made a plan and I discussed with he, him um, for a minutes, after that he uh, showed his interest about our technologies and uh, uh, then I uh, discussed and uh, told him about our uh, price rate of our technology which is uh, drum kit, which price is, market price is about 40 US dollars. So uh, he was uh, surprised. What? I am a very poor man, how can I purchase it? So I again told him, no, there is a, a campus project with us, which I can supply you with a 90% subsidy, for which you have to pay only five, uh, only four dollars, US dollars. Uh, then uh, he has also expressed his inability. Uh, no sir, I had no money. So how can I purchase? So I was in hopeless at that time. Then I made a plan and I took him to the local dealer. How he get the drum kit? And discussed with the dealer. Discuss, uh, lastly, dealer agreed to supply the drum kit with a condition that uh, to return the amount in the next week. Isaac Raika was agreed with and uh, told uh, he will return the amount by borrowing some relatives in next week. Then uh, we supplied the drum kit and uh, made all arrangements and uh, planted some vegetable seedlings like uh, tomato, chili and eggplants in their, in their field. Uh, after a week, uh, sorry, the, par the um, family members like his wife and uh, children were helped him in his work. After a week, the field uh, was so green and they were very pleased, they were happy because uh, it was a uh, uh, new system for them. Then uh, I uh, um, um, organized the other activities like in the in that place, like uh, what uh, SAG meeting, farmer meeting, and uh, uh, LOFA meetings to other farmers, but they could not. Uh, they, but they did not uh, uh, respond to me. Only Isaac Raika was uh, responding, and he continued his work. 
then uh, he he continued his work and uh, um, sorry uh, i uh, uh, also um, then uh, i made in uh, some so many night halls for the um, uh, activities like jo sg meetings and a uh, farmer meetings then uh, days upon days uh, after some days he harvested some uh, green fruits green fruits flowers came and green fruits when the other farmers seen it they were, uh, in the uh, i just lost uh, something uh, when the isakraika did it other farmers and the neighbors of his village and he uh, are were criticizing him why are you doing uh, this unnecessarily wasting the time what will be the benefit of you but he d- didn't care it he continued his work after some days he will he, he got, got some he, he harvested or vegetable crop crops and uh, eat in his family and uh, share to the neighbors and a uh, uh, surplus of crops he sold in the market and uh, earned money first time he earned money earned um, four dollars us dollars in the market and he so he bought a sari and a, a towel for him a sari for his wife and a and some dresses for his children when the family members see, saw it and uh, wear it they, they were very happy their happiness we can't express it oh, in the meanwhile other peoples other villagers were seeing the reality and a uh, Uh, they understood uh, and felt that uh, felt they are, they are guilty and uh, um, guilty with his shame and uh, um, tried to develop their relation with the isak raika and uh, to uh, and interested to cultivate the their lands by using our, our this micro irrigation system and uh, came to, he also came to me and uh, requested to cultivate like this and i also supplied one musia gamango nearby the field of isak raika uh, and cultivated by supplying drum kit and they cultivated like uh, chili tomato and egg plants besides other peoples of their village also seen it and uh, who were criticized the Uh, the um, isak and his families also slowly came to isak and his families to develop their relation by sharing the crops and also it was uh, slowly um, the, the increased the uh, economic condition of the um, isak at uh, after all uh, he got 5000 rupees that is uh, 500 100 us dollar after this season after that uh, this season from that crop and he was uh, uh, he was uh, a old debt he cleared uh, his old debt out of his uh, 100 us dollar and uh, purchased uh, some other things like he uh, dresses and uh, he invested uh, uh, some money for uh, uh, purchasing one cycle etc gradually the other people of the people um, villagers other villagers were cultivating started cultivating like this and uh, since then isak raika started and continued his vegetable cultivation in every season and uh, till end of our uh, two and a half years he uh, earned more money and uh, out of which he purchased land 
he purchases some ornaments for his wife and a, uh, also he is in a good dresses for his family and a, uh, also he changed his a thatched house to tin house now he is in good condition and a, uh, those people who are not liking him and his family to participate their cultural functions also now also now uh, welcoming him and uh, cooperating him uh, in every functions it was only possible for his positive attitude and a great deal trust of on me and uh, uh, also i um, i have uh, trained to a phulogamango who was our who is our vvm to follow up the uh, um, self service self chapter service and a uh, self chapter service and he is selling all types of spare parts of our uh, technologies to um, the users and uh, the all the villagers and the uh, side by village farmers are cultivating now in every season okay. by using our ms systems okay. huh? Okay, so now we have Susanta from the, our last India colleague. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I think I'll be okay, sure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning to you all. I am Susanta Nanda. I am the chief executive officer of a IFAD funded project working in the eastern part of India in Odisha. The project is basically Odisha Tribal Empowerment and Livelihoods Program. It aims to enhance the food security and empower the tribals across seven districts of Odisha. The project started way back in 2004 and starting with a base level of around 20% families having food security. In seven years time, we have around 72% having food security in that region. That's a different story. Friends, I'm going to tell you how MIS has been upscaled in Orissa, in particular in our region, and it is able to provide year-round cash flow to the poor tribal farmers, enabling them to overcome poverty in the shortest possible time. The area where we're operating, Rainford Agriculture is the most significant livelihood for thousands of farmers residing in that area. These poor tribal farmers have suffered as water is the most limiting factor of farm productivity and because of climate change and erratic rainfall, there has been a stagnant farm yield and consequential poverty and food insecurity in that region. The government and the program is trying to address this through various interventions. Thanks to Copernix and IFAD who had the intervention of Scampis way back in 2009 and by now Scampis has covered around 15,000 plus families in 265 villages of two districts of OTLP area. Scampus effectively has demonstrated use of uh, micro irrigation system and water and energy efficiency. It also showed, a, showed that the vegetable area in that region has grown, the cropping season, the productivity, the fruiting time and the yield everything improved the farmers were able to get an additional income of around 200 to 300 us dollars through use of this micro irrigation kit in a small area of 10 to 20 square meter there was a need to of scale this mis once the grant came to an end this year there was a demand from other stakeholders to have this type of mis kit to enhance the food security and income since this campus project came to an end. The three constraints in upscaling was that this was to be taken up in other areas also. That meant new stakeholders whose capacity was to be built. The capacity was built by having exposure visits to the farmers where campus project had already taken up. Taking these farmers to the new areas where this is going to be upscaled. The biggest challenge was the grant in form of campus 
which provide around 90% subsidy to the farmers to purchase the irrigation kits were no more available. But the opportunity came from two of India's national programs, the National Mission of Micro Irrigation and the National Mission of Horticulture, wherein around 80% of subsidy was available for purchase of micro kits. The other constant of scampies was that the drip liners, the sideways drips, they were flat tubes and was unable to withstand variable pressure. So in the upscaling approach, we went a bit ahead, modified the technology and we have the round drippers now, which is able to withstand the variable pressure of the undiluting terrain where you are working. Having adopted uh, the scaling up approach, uh, as many are interested and uh, as Rudolf was saying, the methodology, the methodology of upscaling and the strategy were manifold. First, in the villages, poorest of the poor farmers in clusters of 25 were selected. Not all were selected because in the initial stage, the strategy was to give subsidy, which was to be withdrawn later on. And once the subsidy was withdrawn, and once this technology was demonstrated on a larger scale, it is expected and it is happening that the amount of money required to purchase the kits are coming from self-help groups. We have a lot of women self-help groups in our area who saves regularly for some income or livelihood generation activities. And now people have started taking loans from the self-help groups to purchase the micro kits to do the upscaling. And there is another strategy in built into our upscaling program to federate all these farmers into federation under the Co Cooperative Self-Help Act of India so that both forward linkage in terms of supply of the kits and marketing arrangement is taken care. And each of these 25 clusters of farmers were linked to a poly nursery which was to be exclusively managed by these women self-help groups as a income generating activities. And we promoted a little bit of new technology of scaling the MIS in those areas. We had this uh, gravity based drip irrigation system with uh, raised beds of uh, vegetable cultivation. We had pressure compensated drip liners at 30 centimeter interval to the main line, which uh, delivered approximately around a liter of water to the plants. And we taught how to manage the polynos to the women self-help groups and all water available in the area water lifting arrangements were provided to have gravity flow drip irrigation system and you won't believe in just one season the results have been fantastic in those areas where it has been upscaled now the farmers have three crops a year instead of the one that they used to depend on rain fed agriculture that means year round income to them the whole enterprise is is being managed by a single farmer, single farmhouse. No outside labor is required. The productivity is around 12 to 15 tons of tomato in those 1000 square meter of area or around 7.5 tons of cabbage. The additional income to these farmers is to the tune of 800 to 1000 dollars per year. The immediate plan in this upscale approach is now we are covering around 1626 farmers in six districts of Odisha. The plan is to cover around 5,000 farmers in next two years time. The plan and the capacity building is also going on to federate them and to link them to the urban market for disposal of their surplus produce so that they have a round the year income. Uh, through this uh, method of upscaling, the project has been able to take care of two to three few things that was very basic in the beginning. Number one, there has been sufficient farm income throughout the year to take the farmers out of poverty that was prevalent in those areas. Number two, it has effectively addressed the food and nutrition security because the farmers have started consuming vegetables in a very, very large quantity. And third, it has also effectively demonstrated vegetable cultivation through deep irrigation as a means of livelihood in that area. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Um, that was really inspiring. Questions? Yes, ma'am. 
Yes, yes, you may. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Esther Nilsson, Sida. I just have a question whether there's been any um, increased employment opportunities for those people who have not got access to land, landless people. Uh, yes. Can yes. I answer questions one by one so that I won't miss out? Okay, if you if you wish, so. <laughs> okay, why don't you go take that microphone there then? I think we're from, uh, from Sida. Yeah, we have a huge program of land allocation going on in the program area also. Uh, the strategy is to have land to all the landless. In our program area and across all the tribal sublet, uh, subbelt of Orissa, we have landlessness of around 22% absolute landless. And you'll be happy to know that in our program area in last three years time, we have provided land totals to almost 15,000 families. And many of them are covered under this. So the employment opportunities, not only in this, we have various livelihood options that is also being taken care of. Uh, like poultry, we are a poultry surplus area now. Uh, they are also taking off uh, goatery and various other livelihood options other than this uh, vegetable cultivation. Okay. Uh, my name is Paul Hicks. I'm from the Global Water Initiative. And we're, we're doing a similar project in Central America. One of the things we're looking at are the very similar numbers that you are seeing at returns of $800 to $1,000 or, or uh, people are generating $800 to $1,000 with the drip systems. But there's still an expectation for subsidy. Uh, but we're, we've shown that they can very easily pay back uh, a small loan um, in, in a season. But if you gave, gave somebody a year or 18 months, they would very easily be able to pay for the system. So the question with this larger public-private partnership that was introduced early in the morning is, have you explored ways of connecting these micro-irrigation systems to uh, credit systems? Yeah, as I said in the beginning, uh, we have this... Uh, system of now huge subsidy by government of India. But gradually we are in the process of withdrawing this subsidy and we see w there are a number of women self-help groups in our area who save regularly for their income generating activities. And in some cases, the farmers and the women, members of the family, they have started borrowing from their corpus fund for purchasing this kit, which costs around 18,000 rupees to start the micro irrigation and upscale it. So we see the sustainability point in that because the credit and the subsidy cannot come every time from the government. They have to manage from the resource and it has started. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. My name is uh, Laurence Travato. I work for IDE, but in Burkina Faso. So, referring to my colleague uh, on subsidies, I would like to ask one question. You mentioned 90% subsidies for technology, and you're saying going to credits. We've seen in many cases about having too high subsidies, the risk of, I would say, corrupting the system of market development because you're not really creating demand and you're not promoting the motivation of purchasing the technology. So what are your strategy to go from 90% to, I mean, 0% and credit and the risk? And my question, my second question is a return on investment. I think the colleague from Meta Meta asked something very strategic for sustainability. And I would like to know in India, where you go regarding drip irrigation? I mean, do you go for 100 square meters or 500? What is the demand of the clients? We look in Burkina, for example, Return on investment for 500 square meter is for one crop season. So this is really our key product. In India, what's the situation? Uh, I think I'll uh, answer your second question first. The model that we are demonstrating and it has been effectively demonstrated in adjoining states also, we go for around 1000 square meter of area. But many of the farmers, they don't have that much of land. So it is anything between 500 square meter to 1000 square meter. And that's good enough to give them an income of around $800 to more than $1,500 a year in three crops which they are able to manage. Second, coming to the point of subsidy, this subsidy is actually activating the market forces to come into play. We never had the manufacturers who had the system to manufacture so much of drip kits, etc. With the subsidy, in fact, we are giving a thrust to them uh, to enter into the market. And that we have seen. And gradually, with withdrawal of subsidy, they are able to sustain also. Okay. Thank you. My name is Jomfried Neumann. I'm a consultant to GIZ. Um, my question is um, this um, question related to market. You have a very strong upscaling effect. You must have excellent demand in the market and you have 
must have very good access of the farmers to the market. Was it never a problem to you? Uh, because of the, the changing economic scenario, we have a huge urbanization going on. And the demand for this type of organic uh, foods coming from the tribal belt is very, very high. So what I also try to emphasize in my story is that we have farm federations, those who are linked to some of the companies, those who do sorting, grading, and storage, and carrying all these things to refrigerated bands to urban areas. That has also started because the urban areas are deficient in green vegetables. So this is taking care of that. We had a small video. I think we don't have the time for that photo slide. Otherwise, we would have shown you how it has gone to the urban market also through uh, private partnership. Yes, I've seen. I've seen you guys. Let me just do it from back to the front. <laughs> okay, my names are Rose Nikuri from the Water Services Trust Fund. Can Kenya. you show that video? Um, yeah, from from what I've seen from your presentation is like um, this technology is mainly being used for vegetables, tomatoes, and the short-term crops. I was, my question is, would it be suitable also for the long-term crops? I don't know whether you plant maize or beans in India, or if it's not, what are the challenges? Yeah, we go for long-term crops like mango, if you know. Uh, many of the horticulture crops which are perennially nature and stay in the field for 10, 20 years in the initial stages for their survival, we go for this deep irrigation also. That is why we have a national horticulture mission which gives huge subsidy for this. Many of our mango plantations and horticultural plantations, they take up, even the bananas, they take a micro irrigation system, these drip liners and drip lines. Okay. My name is Mero Biero. I work for CWS in East Africa. I'm very happy about uh, the presentation. And Thank you, ma'am. You mentioned about involving the poor of the poorest in the communities. I would like more elaboration on that because the trend is that uh, with the new technologies, the most vulnerable households in the communities are left out. How do you go about that? Uh, as I told you in the beginning, we are working there for the last seven years. We have very strong uh, grassroots level institutions. So in the initial stage, we do a wealth ranking in the villages and we categorize them into four categories. The poorest of the poor are those ones, those who don't have any lands and are the destitute families. The second one above them is that some, those who have lands but not enough to earn livelihood throughout the year. Third is the landed person who has enough to earn livelihood throughout the year. And the fourth, the richest one is that who has a job outside his village or in the government who is much better off. So with this, uh, classification in the village, we have the beneficiaries ready and we tackle the poorest of the poor in the beginning. Because for the others, they can avail the credit and they can avail other facilities from the bank and take it up. So it's only the poorest of the poor who are given this type of support by the program of the government. I am Bharat Sharma from International Water Management Institute. Uh, I shall like to share a similar uh, project which uh, IFAD and Government of India supported both for Nepal and uh, the hilly areas of India which are in the Himalayan foothills where the holdings are really small. So, and where this kind of programs for 100 square meter, 200 square meter, they were found extremely useful. And the second thing which I wanted to clarify for India, in India we have both kind of drip irrigation system. There are very large irrigation system which sugarcane farmers and large farmers where the subsidy is provided to the companies and they in turn provide subsidy to the farmers and then they, there is a second uh, kind of subsidy which is available to poor farmers through national horticulture mission and through other kind of programs where you can say this kind of subsidy otherwise does not qualify for the normal subsidy because these systems they are not standardized. These are not BIS or ISI or ISO kind of standardized system. These are normal systems. So the normal government subsidy for which is available to the large companies is not available to them but this is available under the national horticulture mission and other kind of things where these uh, so th we cover a whole range starting from uh, 200 square meter to even people um, uh, ex say, uh, 50 hectare or 100 any any kind of things so those kind of large farmers are also there so impression should not be there that only this kind of drip irrigation is available the other kind of larger irrigation systems they are also available. thank you sama for updating but it's a national mission of micro irrigation which is giving subsidy to these small farmers also and is to, to the tune of 80 percent and they are all iso also they cannot be any companies thank you very much good morning everybody my name is pr singhvi i come from a company called baroj india private limited 
as a company we have been associated with uh, a social project which is known as water for world and i am very glad to share with you my association with uh, uh, the gentleman who is giving you the presentation i had the opportunity of meeting these people way back in 2009 when i was here for the first time to attend uh, SIWI conference where I was introduced to them by IFED through one of my colleagues who is working in Italy. The problem in India in drip irrigation system which is very very serious is that people use four different materials to make a tube for drip irrigation system which is HDPE which is LLDP, LDP and master batch. So in effect they don't have the right concoctation of the material and nobody knows what they are using. We as a company, we took the initiative for the first time to give them a ready to use compound so that these companies, these farmers or these drip lateral manufacturers, they get a right composition of material and they don't have any problem on the quality. So we are in an advanced stage of uh, introducing this grade on a commercial basis. I am personally involved with the IDEI in India and I am very glad to inform you that their chairman, uh, Mr. Amitabh Sadangi is very well known to us and because of his initiative we have this time awarded him as the innovator of the year in our plastic federation when we had the exhibition which is held after every three years. So we are very deeply committed to this and our company both our principal Borealist and Boros we are committed to this and we assure all the people who are associated with, with this of our continuous cooperation. Thank you, Sangvi. I welcome you to my area because we are finding the manufacturers really difficult to come by. Uh, right now, we have only the joint irrigation, Premier, uh, and then uh, Neta Farm of uh, Israel, those who have best of the farm. Um, right now, rightly, as you pointed out, getting the right manufacturer has been the most difficult challenge for us. Welcome to Odisha. Hello, my name is Kaiser and my, I'm a student at the Stockholm University. And I'm only wondering a little bit about the crops that you choose to promote when you start these projects with different farmers. Uh, you've mentioned eggplant, tomato, uh, and Cabez. sweet potato. And I'm only wondering if you work with traditional crops and crops that are indigenous to the specific areas and how you work with increasing biodiversity through that. See, we have three cropping seasons in that area. Each cropping season is almost uh, of around four years, uh, four months. Every year we have three cropping seasons, each season having four months. And we have different indigenous crops which are grown in small quality in those areas. And even the, the hybrid varieties, the composite varieties, they are also being taken care of. And as you rightly pointed out, it, has, it is mainly uh, tomatoes, cabbage, cauliflower, capsicum, sweet potato, uh, then eggplants and many other things, uh, lady finger. Those who can withstand the agroclimates of those regions. So we have the agroclimate wise. Uh, vegetable plant ready for each cropping season and that's how, how we take it up. Thank you. I think I have one more. No, no, you, have, you, you still have at least two more. Finn Plauberg, Aarhus University. I uh, have a project in Ghana with drip irrigation as well. Food security, healthy food. Uh, we all know along the, the chain from soil to, to table there's a risk of contamination. How do you deal with that uh, in the micro-irrigation and uh, which kind of waters do you have access to and do we know the quality of the irrigation water? I am not very clear about your question. Can you please repeat it again? What quality? What quality is not an issue because this water is only taken from fresh water sources, either from streams or from groundwater. Or, or from dog well. Water quality is not a issue there. A lot of places water quality is an issue, uh, sub-urban vegetable production, but it's maybe on the countryside here. And uh, the cultivation in almost all these areas by default are organic. So if you are talking of a high degree of pesticide and fertilizer, it's almost absent in that area. And in our upskilling strategy also, we have, we have been promoting organic fertilizer with vermivas and very little amount of pesticides uh, and almost no inorganic fertilizers. And as uh, my friend Mr. Sarma pointed out, uh, water quality is not a problem because it's almost from the streams, from the dog wells or from groundwater, whatever source it is. Rudolf, when you're ready to answer the blue water question, raise your hand, huh? I'll come to you. Uh, my question was almost the same as uh, what uh, uh, my friend has asked about the quality of the water because sometimes it can circle with the water from the sewage because it is very fertile. 
And you know, this is the kind of food people were given to eat. The other thing is the women group in that particular place. You talked about, we have seen they work in the fields. And all the time, all over the world, women are being used. Where are these men? Where do they go when these women, although they are groups, we want also to see men being involved because women are also used as uh, almost uh, like slaves. And do you consider them because they are poor? Once you buy, you talked about buying of land. And when you talk of buying a land for these poor people, you put them together. In fact, they don't have a space. It's good to consider them as women and the children. They suffer a lot in most of our countries, and especially in India and Africa. Thank you. Uh, the things are changing uh, quite a fast in India, for your information, ma'am. Uh, once we empower the women, and once the women know the technology or anything, it's the whole family who gets empowered. Once you empower the women, and once you are involved in the project, you we open the entire windows of the world to the family. So that's how we look at that. And our project and the government is trying very hard to empower the women in that area. And things are changing very, very fast. We agree with that, but we want also our men to be involved. Not our women to work in the field of the sector. Thank you for your suggestion. It's the both way. I'm Lucy, Lucy Massa, and uh, I'm a livestock person. Uh, before yesterday, I was still in Orissa. These tribal people are actually animal-oriented people. Yeah, they're basic of the farming systems, are the sheep, the poultry, and sometimes the cattle. So what have you been doing to, uh, when you promote this micro-irrigation, to first uh, link these women to the dealers and not just the men, because the women are mainly doing the work with the livestock and with the water. And what have you been trying to integrate your micro-irrigation into their livestock-based livelihood system. I know the rest of uh, Indian farmers are Hindus and they are veg-oriented. So here we have also a government move to make these people agriculture-oriented. So you have not been talking about livestock at all. Yeah, a little bit about poultry. So, and another point is, it, you say you do organic farming, but if I see the pictures, this looks like monocropping and maybe you use the animal manual, but you also did not mention that. I'm aware you cannot explain everything in a short time, but uh, I Just, think uh, I would like you to uh, enlighten on project and government more on how to integrate livestock with micro-irrigation. But we have different types of people in the same village. We have landed peoples, we have landless peoples. And as you said, for the landless people, we have taken up poultry, we have taken up goatry in a huge scale. And uh, I know, I don't know if you are in Odisha, if you had gone to those seven districts, somehow in last one year's time, it has become poultry surplus. It used to be imported from Andhra, it used to be imported from down south. But in one year's time, they have become surplus in uh, these uh, low cost scavenging birds of Banraja variety, calling up brown that has been evolved in that area. So it's mainly for the landless farmers. Uh, my name is Arif uh, with USAID Pakistan. Um, so uh, your program seems to be premised on uh, uh, the initial investment coming from uh, uh, the savings groups. What's no. been the experience? No. Initial investment coming through subsidy by the government of India. Currently, but you're saying in, uh, in extending the program to yeah. 5,000 farmers, you, you plan to rely on these uh, yeah. uh, on these savings groups. Yeah. So one, one of the whole thing is demonstrated effectively in the field and once the farmer knows that they are able to earn around thousand dollars enough to get out of the poverty and we have seen other well of farmers in that area trying to take loan from the women self help cooperatives which is around twenty thousand for these drip kids and to start the work. Okay, so my question is that your, uh, it's your future programs are premised on the savings groups. Uh, what's been the experience in other parts of India where you don't have savings groups? So for example in Gujarat or Maharashtra. Uh, secondly, um, you, 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 I think I, I, maybe I misheard you. I didn't get it. Uh, you, you talked about pressure in the uh, in the pipes to to accommodate the undulating land. Is that is pressure composite low uh, pressure uh, drip liners. That is basically the area is undulating. Uh -huh. So the drippers they discharge uniformly at every point. If it is the flat ones that as we used in the scamp is. Uh, the discharge will be more in the offland area and low in the okay, sorry so low more in the lowland area. So less simply, in the you're, you're not using motors or pumps no. or anything, right? So. Okay. Uh, 
and I think, yeah. Self -help group. Self -help. Can I answer to your self-help group kind of thing? Uh, actually, I have experience of working in uh, this particular uh, MI system for last 18 years and I work in all front. So, talking to your question like if there is no self-help group, actually I have tried in the many places like linking to the rural banks and cooperatives. That's the one. Second, also there are some NGOs, they are extending help. From there, it's not self-help group but they are extending help from their fund and they are helping because that is they are showing in the project area. So that help also you can take. And third is very important that corporate houses are there. The corporate house, they also, they provide some money because they do the some buyback. Like sugar cane and all, sugar cane industries are there. All you can take some industry, those are actually working in corporate sector. They will help you in the, this kind of technology because when there is a water scarcity and when they need a kind of technology, if you come with a new technology, then everybody will going to help you. That you can do. Okay. Um, I'm going to give preference to people who haven't asked questions, and then I'll come back to you. No, actually, both of you have. So, <laughs> okay, then go ahead. Okay, sorry. My name is Leonard Voltering. I'm working for GFA Consulting Group in Hamburg, but before that I worked in uh, Niger, West Africa, for five years uh, at ICRISAT. And we also developed a lot of uh, irrigation, drip irrigation systems that were adopted to this uh, situation. And just very shortly, and I think you have a really interesting experience. Uh, when we started there in 2005, we started with cheap materials, with cheap materials because people don't have money, but cheap also meant actually uh, poor people, poor quality, and it didn't work. Um, where I wanted to go actually is at the question of energy. These small kits, they are uh, often very, uh, for, for small areas, they are used with the barrels. You need to fill it manually. People uh, where we worked, uh, th this was not a success. Treadle pumps also didn't work. Then you went to uh, motor pumps. And my question actually to you is, have you also used alternative energies? We've been experimenting very successfully with solar, energy combined with drip irrigation, uh, converting um, rice irrigated fields, which we're using an elevated dam in Ghana to use for drip, low pressure drip irrigation. And lastly, in Niger, there are a lot of artesian wells. These are wells that actually are under natural pressure. Um, and we've been irrigating low pressure fields of five hectares for farmers. This has been very uh, interesting. I would actually like to hear from you. What kind of alternative energies have you been experimenting with or have been using? Uh, we have been using a lot of motorized pumps, uh, but these solar pumps we have tried in few of the villages, not for drip irrigation, but for providing drinking water support. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, one more question. Okay. To echo a bit what uh, the previous speaker was saying, we've also had an experience of drip kit in the Limpopo Basin, which was not successful. And one of the reason was that the water quality was in a way that the system was clogging quite often. And when it will have that, or when it will reach that state, they'll just decide to, to leave it out. So I'd like to find out from your experience, are you not judging success too early? Or are you not encountering such challenges? Because so far I haven't heard much challenges on how you are actually implementing this micro irrigation. Yeah, if you have seen the diagram that had projected- Success never comes so early. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. If you have seen the technology diagram that I had shown, we have filters when the water comes out to take care of plugging, etc. And the farmers are taught how to wash this uh, drip layer drippers uh, to get rid of this clogging. And it's not too early. Scampis was there for three years. They have effectively demonstrated that this technology can work in that area. And uh, on an average, as uh, my other friends from India have pointed out, we have very good systems which has almost worked for 5 to 10 years in different parts of India. So they can work for 10 years, uh, cost effective, and yes, uh, some experience of previous uh, practices for cleaning and for uh, preventing clogging of the equipment are being taken care of. Can I respond, can I respond to your question? 
Yeah, we trained farmers. There's, there's, a, yeah. there's a critical element of promoting an MI system. See, only talking here about that to promote the MI system is good to listen. But farmers, unless until they are educated, they will create a hell lot of problem for you. Because the emitters, what you are telling that is clogging part, that is the emitter part. Emitter is there, the micro tube is there, there is definitely there must be no clogging. If there is a dripper, you need to see the which kind of dripper. So there is a clogging. But clogging is not a difficulty part. Clogging, you need to educate the farmer how to avoid that clogging because of filtration and all that. How can you take care of the, uh, the particle, external particle to get into the pipe? And second also, there is acid treatment. So those things, some kind of minimum knowledge should be there with the farmer. So it will not be there. But I have seen people don't use because if they are not educated properly. But in Scampi's project, we have done, like we have, promo we have 10 promoters working with us and also we have developed village based mechanic. So these village based mechanic, they are the farmers. They are trained to how to tackle this kind of situation and they are in the village. They are giving after sale service to this kind of problem. Okay. Thank you very much for your keen interest. For any further clarification, please contact me susanta at otlp.org. Uh, I welcome Mr. Sangvi to our area and uh, uh, Lady Livestock Expert to educate more on how to integrate an MIS with livestock. Thank you very much for your keen interest. Okay.